it's been an eventful morning, so I haven't had really any time to talk to you guys. Just saw the DJI doc for its first formal introduction and did the keynote. And you probably saw the doc and you're wondering, what does this have to do with photography or videography or anything that I do? That's a great question. Why am I here? So as you guys know, every once in a while, I still write for fstoppers.com, the website that talks about photography and videography. They got contacted by DJI to have someone come to this event and cover it a little bit and talk about some of the products and things that they're doing in their enterprise and industrial areas. So I volunteered because I guess I fly drones and I could come to Vegas. So that's why I'm here. Now I will admit that when I heard about the event, I was like, yes, sign me up, let's go. That's gonna be awesome drone stuff. And then a little bit later, I found out that it's more enterprise and industrial related things like the oil industry or trains or surveying or rescue or uh, law enforcement, all of the above can use drones in different ways. And I've been wondering why did they invite me or well, F-stoppers to come here and cover this? And I think the real answer is just that it's to show that DJI is doing a lot more than just photo or video work. They have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of huge drones that I'll show you that do completely crazy stuff that you wouldn't even imagine. The drone stuff we just watched with the DJI dock can launch different types of drones that have all kinds of imaging systems in them, can do a lot of advanced mapping, tracking, and all of that stuff for any of the things that I talked about in terms of emergency response or having it to be deployed in areas to, here's an example, let's say you're a train, manu train operator, train business, train, let's say you run trains. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> you're a locomotive industry. Well, you have thousands of miles of track that have sensors on them that if something big falls on the track, uh, it tells the train that could be coming, hey, I need to stop. If you have drones deployed along those tracks, you don't have to have someone manually go out and check it. You can just have a drone that's in that area go find exactly where that thing, that debris, something is that fell on the train track and go find it all automatically without having anyone involved. There's also emergency situations where things like firefighters can use them or they can find missing people in remote areas without having to put anyone's life at risk and also not having to fly a helicopter. A lot of the times helicopters can only get to certain areas by having drones. Not only can they use heat imaging software or heat imaging thermal imaging cameras that are built into the drones, they have a lot easier time finding possible people or things going on in emergency situations. I'm no expert, but it's obviously things I'm learning about. So. It comes back to, why am I here? If I had to guess, it is because DJI just wants the consumer side, you guys, to know all of the other stuff they're doing in the industry. And I equate it to Nikon. So Nikon, all of us associate Nikon with photography cameras. But the reality is most of their business is actually in imaging software, things like MRI scanners or imaging software for really big industry-leading technology. That's where a lot of their money comes from. It's actually not their camera or their camera systems. And that's what I think is happening here with DJI, where people used to tinker with drones, they would take consumer-sized drones and start using them for these purposes. And then they're like, hey, this stuff is really good. We should make a whole thing out of it. So this has been going on for about seven years now at this point, and more enterprise solutions are being developed, and it's why DJI keeps releasing more products that you might not necessarily be interested in, but some of those technologies are affecting other parts of their product line. It means things like LiDAR that you can find on the Ronin 4D, Ronin 4, whatever the gimbal camera thing is. The LiDAR technology in that was actually adapted from some of their enterprise solutions so that they can pull focus automatically and very quickly on that camera. So I think the answer is that they just want people to know of all of the things they're doing that is on not only their enterprise side, but maybe some of those things that can actually come to their consumer side. There's actually one product here that I'm excited to see, and it's actually just a little parachute for your drone, which could actually be a big deal for us consumers that are out there taking photos, making videos with our drones. So hopefully, we'll get to share that to you. Anyways, I'm gonna get some food, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I lied. Food isn't happening yet, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna go check out a demo of the parachute thing. So let's go do that.
All right, so I didn't actually get to see a technical demo of the parachute. I got to see the product, but they're not actually putting a drone in the sky and launching the parachute in front of us. However, I did learn that it is automatic. I paid attention mostly to the Mavic 3 one. However, that product fits on multiple drones. So it also fits on the Mavic 2. It fits on, I wanna say the Air 2S, but I could be wrong. But I have a feeling that if this is something that catches on, not only in the enterprise section, but also in the consumer section, that it'll be adapted to more drones. The way it works is it has an IMU and an altitude sensor so that if it starts to feel unstable or it starts to spiral, or you start to lose height way quicker than you can actually lose height in a drone, it'll automatically deploy. That could save your drone in those situations where it falls out of the sky or the battery is about to die, which actually happened a few days ago, not for me, but one of my friends that was flying. He was like, this thing is literally about to fall out of the sky if I don't get it to the ground. So what's really cool is it's not a permanent attachment. It's super easy to attach. So it's not something you always have to use. It's something you could just keep in your bag. And if your battery's low or you're on the fence about how far you're gonna fly away or anything like that, you could always just attach it and have that extra peace of mind. It's one of those things that as drones get more and more expensive, it actually ends up being a cost saving measure just because you could end up saving your drone or having that peace of mind. Now, I know that many of you out there may have crashed a drone and a lot of the times it's either over water, which it, the parachute's not gonna help, or it's just into a tree, like a few episodes ago here on this channel. So that's not gonna save it from those moments, but it is one of those things that's really cool to see it happening and it could actually be something that you might end up wanting to use in your work. So, there you go. Parachute for your drill. Now, now, now I can go eat. Hey, pardon the interruption. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support recently. And if you wanted to support me in more ways than liking or subscribing to this channel, there's a little link down below where you can find lots of ways to do that. You can look at my print store, buy a print and put it on your wall. You can get a calendar. Holidays are coming up. It makes a great gift. It has 12 images taken around the world with little QR codes. So if you were to gift that to somebody, they can even look up how those images are taken in the videos that apply to those images. Or you can even check out my Patreon where you can do things like sign up to get my live location-ish. <laughs> you can get on-screen credit at the end of these videos and see some of my raw edits, or you can even get a postcard once a month. So check that out down below. I really appreciate it. And if none of that stuff you can do, maybe just sharing this video with people in your family or friends that would be into travel or photography. Anyways, let's get back to the video. big this thing is. This is my head. I got a big head. Look. This is my hand. That's one propeller. Huge. Okay, that's pretty much it for me today. Got some food, gonna head back to the hotel room, get some more work done, even though I worked in between working here. And then I have dinner tonight with all the other media people. So stay tuned for that. And then maybe we'll go out and shoot a little bit of what's going on, nightlife stuff, legacy things. But first. Hello, how are you? You're welcome, have a good day. You too. Okay, didn't end up going to shoot anything, although it just got dark. Going to dinner now, not feeling great. I feel like I have a headache, probably just caffeine related. So I'm gonna go get dinner, and then maybe if I'm feeling a little bit better after dinner, we'll go shoot some shoot some nightlight stuff. But I think considering how long my days have been, that might just have to be something that waits until after this conference is over. Okay, so clearly it is not the same evening. I think the last time you saw me, I was saying that I might go shoot some nightlife here in Vegas. Uh, and I wasn't feeling well. Well, I went to get dinner, still wasn't feeling well, and I just ended up going to bed. Anyway, so this is the entire next day. The conference is over. I did a few more panels while I was there, and I didn't really film anything else because it was just a continuation of the day before. So I thought I would wrap up this video, you know, kind of talking about a little bit of my thoughts about the event. So a lot of this was pretty new to me. However, it was really interesting to see how these things work, and it was interesting to see what DJI was doing with some of their other drones in an entire world of drone stuff that, honestly, I didn't even really know existed. I listened to a keynote about how the LA Fire Department is using drones to 
not only help in emergency responses, but also map out particular areas that have been hit by fire and map them out compared to what they were before and just do a lot of reconnaissance that's after the fact. And they got to use drones in different ways than you or I think of using drones, which is for photography or videography. And it was really cool to hear about how they're saving lives, they're doing things in agriculture, they're doing things for the fire departments, police departments, and all kinds of stuff. And there's entire industries of people that are innovating drones in different ways to do that. So obviously this conference, I got to see a lot of different drones that were made for those things, but not long ago, just a few years, Enterprise didn't exist for most of these drones. Even got this little, uh, little dock here. It's pretty cool. So anyways, uh, it was just really fun, really interesting to see an entire world of a product that I thought I knew a lot about and to be shown that I don't know anything about. So I would love to know what you guys think. Uh, are you interested in drone technology that's outside photography or videography? Are you interested in learning about what all these little drones do and what this dock does or what it plans to do for the future? Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully tomorrow. Later. <laughs>